Sorry, we have been called to order, and I'm going to have Monique call roll to establish a quorum. Okay, Miss Sweet. I mean, Miss Barron. <laughs> Mr. Sweet. <laughs> uh, Miss Castle. Here. Mr. Herman. Here. Miss Hagen. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. I'm short if you please keep in mind. For our invocation today, I'm going to ask us to stand and have a moment of silence. or correspondence? Okay. Um, <coughs> Ms. Ayers? Here? Group doesn't... So what Sorry, I Ms. Ms. Ayers, is that a, a correspondence or do we? It, it can be, I guess, unless you wanted to discuss it as members. No, I think I think we can do that. Okay. Uh, Bill, do you have a copy? Yes. Go ahead. Attention all board of directors. This is dated December 7th. I am Raphaela Harris and I live at 159 Anderson Avenue. For the past 18 years, I've lived there. Since the making, Mark, 
Since the walking track was built, I have noticed the extreme darkness and unsafe conditions around Anderson Avenue by my property. Traffic has picked up because of the darkness in this area. Lawbreakers love the darkness because they are hard to identify. I'm requesting for some light to be installed in this area as a matter of safety. Thank you, Mrs. R. Harris. Is there no light down there? Yes, sir. There's a light on the corner of Anderson and Patterson. I mean, uh, what? Wayne and White. Right. And Anderson. There's a, there's a light there. Nothing um, on the track that no, I'm aware of? And, no, ma'am. In the building on the track, as much make it dark or anywhere. Yeah. About Anderson and um, Scales Road. No, sir, there's not a light there. Is there, is there, uh, I don't even know what it costs to put in. I got one in my yard that I have to keep paying monthly for, but I didn't ask for it, and then when, I, when the lights go out, they come and they fix them. Uh, in many ways, it's good to have it there, but I'm basically paying for a, a street light for the... I don't know why you're personally paying for that. It doesn't make trouble with both of them. It's on my property. <laughs> yeah, but... I'm pretty sure that's why. Did you request it? No. It was there. It was there when I got there. Oh, you know, the previous owners may have put it up as a yard light. And that's why. It's a light. It's a street light. It's not a yard light. My, ask anybody that lives along there. Uh, well, I was just curious. I don't know what one cost, it costs to put one in. We can, we can find out about that. We also have to go through our real grand electric. I understand. I, I just, would you mind? And then. Do we have any other um, homeowners in that area that have complained about that or requested a light? No, but that's not. No, no, I was just asking. That's not atypical. I mean, no, I'm just most of us don't complain, we just do it. <laughs> okay. I, I'd like to make a, you know, a statement. It's kind of like, um, yeah, I don't know if I should get up. But I'm just would, you tell, would you say who you are first? Sure. Hi, I'm, I'm Michelle Harkness, and I live on the corner of Wainwright and Anderson. And, I, you know, I've been living there for six years, since 2009. And I live in a duplex, so the, my house is number 170, but it's not marked 170. And it's a yellow building, it'll say 421 and then 422, because the duplexes are sort of, let's see, we share the building, and then it's sort of a, let's see, a... Uh, what do they call it? Anyway, it's a very thin wall, a kind of a sheetrock wall, you know, between the, the, the two where the people, you know, actually share. I, I bought my duplex free and clear from some people in Odessa for $25,000. You know, they wanted thirty-five, dollars But anyway, I got $25,000 for it. So and that's, a good, that's a good chunk of change to pay, you know. Plus, you know, every month I'm paying, you know, these fees, you know, to the fort, which I love because I'm a swimmer and I live on the fort and I, I live on the fort because I like the security. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you're, I'm giving you time during the meeting, and I need to right. get to the okay, point. Okay, so I can, I can do this in three sentences. I think the issue is not the light, because there's enough light. I think it's the walking path, and the issue is that people are coming onto the fort, and that anyone, anyone in the world can go onto that walking path. It's like, you know, hi, we're here, and we're from, you know, Midland, and we're going. So the security needs to be checking who's going onto that walking path. I think... I think no, that's why it's not, it's not safe because if, there are if, strange people on there who don't pay for it. If that, if that is what the situation is, then I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Uh, Phil, do you know anything about that or can you respond to that? As far as uh, people walking on the track and not being from members. Thank you. Please sit down. Uh, of course. I have not, <clears throat> I've not gotten any reports from security. Um, since this last meeting, we've really beefed up on security and, and, and been the patrol and they're checking you. Most of the people that walk around that they're not familiar with. I personally live right down the street from there, and I've not seen anybody that doesn't look, I mean, that looks strange, except for the illegals that we caught. But other than that, I don't, I don't think that this was a situation about a light, um, not strange. I don't know what 
Is it difficult to get on to the fort without? They are actually pretty strict right now to where I'm getting complaints. Um, that they're questioning people that actually are renters, but that's what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will look into it further, though. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Especially, I think between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 in, at 9 p.m. and 5 in the morning, it's important to screen who's driving onto the fort. People actually follow me home. You know, on that corner of Wainwright and Anderson, three or four cars, you know, making noise, loud music, intimidation strategies. They can jimmy my lock into my house. Jewelry's been stolen because the sign says, do we enter the fort? Excuse me, I, again, uh, you brought it to our attention, and I appreciate it. We have to go on with the meeting. Thank you. You bet. Um, Bill, the minutes from last meeting? Well, uh, I make a motion that we approve the minutes, except that there are some uh, grammatical, 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 thank you. <laughs> uh, and some changes typos. that have to be made in a few typos, but uh, basically the minutes are, should be correct. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? <coughs> Treasures for Fort Sandy. <clears throat> hey, bank balances as of Wednesday, December 16th, 2015, Del Rio Banks. Texas Community Credit Card, $12,502.87. Texas Community Checking, $58,720.07. Texas Community Money Market, $2,561.86. Brackettville Bank and Trust, General Fund, $98,310.80. Payroll, $4,367.42. Impound, $336,531.05. Las Morris, $64,973.15. Subtotal of $577,967.22. Uh, Fort Clark Historical Building Preservation Fund, $32,044 for a grand total of $609,967.66. Bank transfers, November 2015 estimated to Bank and Trust Las Morris, zero. Texas Community Checking, $75,000 for operating expense. Bank and Trust Payroll, $65,000. Bank and Trust Impound, zero. Total, $140,000. November 2015 actual transfers. Bank and Trust Las Morris, zero. Texas Community Checking, $66,000 <coughs> for operating expense. Bank and Trust Payroll, $64,000. Bank and Trust Impound, zero, for a total of $130,000. December 2014, two, Bank and Trust Las Morris, zero. Texas Community Checking, $40,400 for operating expense. <coughs> Bank and Trust Payroll, $84,000. Bank and Trust Impound, zero, for a total of $124,400. December 2015, estimated transfers to Bank and Trust Las Morris, zero. Texas Community Checking, $75,000 for operating expense. Bank and Trust Payroll, $60,000. Bank and Trust Impound, zero, for a total of $135,000. The payroll for 2015 includes the Christmas bonus for employees. I, um, Move that we approve the treasurer's report. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Did you have any, um, or is that in the DO's report? Uh, of the profit and loss, are you going to go over that at all, or shall we discuss that before we move on? Uh, I don't know. 
Well, this, this is the first time I've ever seen things in the black. I think we should okay. talk about it. Before we do that, may I ask a question on item seven? The, we approved the treasurer's report, but we did not approve the transfer fund. So, okay. Would you make the motion or should Oh, we have to do it separately? I don't know. It's on that. It's listed okay. separately. That's the only thing. That's okay. Um, then I also move to uh, approve transfer funds as read. Okay. Second. Sorry about that. You want to poke me when I miss something? Is Baron second it or I, I think it was Bill who got there first. Okay. It'd be helpful if I had my agenda where I can see it. Okay. All in favor of transfer of funds? Opposed? Motion passed. All right, the uh, daily operations report. I'll, I'll start with field operations. Um, and we're gonna. No. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, starting with the animal uh, uh, situation, we had, we had a member that was um, uh, attacked by a dog. We had another member's dog that was attacked by a dog. Matt and I had got together and he filled out, or we made up these uh, registration forms and fines for when your dog is loose. And it says in the rules and regulations that your dog should be, they should all be uh, registered with the, all the proper information, the rabies tag and all that good stuff. Um, and that slipped by and that's understandable it happens. But what we're doing now is Immediately, and I'm asking the, the members for help here, immediately if you see a loose dog in your neighborhood or as you're driving through, immediately call security and they have been instructed to get there as soon as possible. And either pick up the dog or if it's the, the owner is around, let them know that there's a leash law and it needs to be on a leash. When the dog is picked up, it's brought to the front gate and it's held there until the owner comes. And the owner is required to fill out both of these uh, information on their dog, which is the right, the kind of dog it is, its color, its name, rabies tag, so that we know where it is if it gets lost again. The first time it's a warning, the second time it's a fine, and then they increase with each, with each occurrence. Um, hopefully that deters people from just not locking their dogs up properly, and we know animals get out and it happens, so that's why the first one's a warning. The rest of them, let's be a little more diligent on it. These are all located on the back table for y'all that have dogs and can register <coughs> for us. Um, are we going to get the word out on, on how to do this in, it, it, yes, in the newsletter? Oh. Can we um, do it before the next newsletter is out? You know, do a special newsletter sure. just on the issue? Sure. <coughs> Excuse me, are pit bulls, are they supposed to be registered here on the port? Any animal. <coughs> Any animal? Yes, sir. And uh, again, we, we can't go door to door and knock on everyone's door and say, hey, register your animal. We're kind of expecting everybody to just be uh, responsible about it. And we know we have to do it. Um, so we'll just, we just hope that everybody gets it done. If not, if the dog gets loose, well, then we'll get it done that way. It also helps that when a, a strange animal shows up, that we know where it belongs. Correct. I'd, I'd really like them to know where mine belonged, right. if I had one. Everybody knows somebody with a dog then. Everybody on my street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we put these forms like uh, maybe uh, the front, the front, the front, desk front counter, and maybe the at the pro desk. shop and the golf course, uh, RV park, uh, all those places so they can. We can put them in every area. That, that way they, no one can say I. Where it makes sense, yeah. Can right. you put it in a PDF? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. You will be everywhere. All right. What I didn't mean. What about people coming into the motel with dogs? I, I, They're I, responsible for their animal when they bring it on. And when they come on and when they rent and then they uh, when they rent the motel 
and they speak with the girls up front saying, hey, can I, is my dog allowed? Yes, your dog is allowed, but you are responsible for it. We do have a leash law. So that's... You know, I think you're charging extra for the yes, dog. Yes, in fact, when I stayed in the motel 10 years ago, they charged more for my dog than for me. <laughs> Which I thought was interesting because the dog was very tiny. Um, okay, enough enough interruptions, please, because... I have just a quick question. On. Is it one form for owner or one form for dog? No, there's... there's we have we have you can put at least up to three or two on the on the form, but if we have more, and and if, and you're allowed to have that many in your unit. Remember, yeah. there's you're allowed so many in certain units. If you can fill out on the back or whatever, if you get two, if you need two to fill out for more, that's fine. There's thank you. There's two places on the form. Okay. Let uh, us move on. Moving on. Um, Cats the, don't have to be registered, sir. Cats don't have to be registered. Don't be all pets. Don't ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, moving on. With the board approved the purchase of a uh, new air conditioner and heater for the motel. Um, we had a motel down because those are PTAC units. You can't service them. They're they're completely sealed. So when it, when they go out, they have to be uh, taken to a place of service. So this one was completely out. It was one of the oldest, and it had gotten replaced. Um, we also replaced a hot water circulation pump for Patton Hall. Uh, it wasn't pumping the water up. People would complain about cold water. So that was replaced and now uh, I haven't had a complaint since. Um, the baler, and I'm not getting into uh, the recycling committee, but as far as field operations, the baler is in. So far we have bailed 10 bales of cardboard. I don't know if any of y'all have seen the mountain of cardboard we have in the motor pool. <laughs> yeah. but, one of, there's four alcoves full of cardboard. We have already cleaned out one. So it's a slow process because we've got day-to-day -day work going on. But just that one, and they're all about the same size. So that one made us 10. So by the end of this thing, we'll have a full, a full truckload to go to a direct mill, which makes us a lot of money, a lot more than if we just send one or a mixed load or whatever. We're also um, bailing the mixed paper, and eventually we're going to get to the plastics. I want to get into the, hard, uh, the recycling part, but I'm just saying it's field operations. That's what we're doing. If anybody wants to come by and just take a look at it, please feel free to just if, let the either my mechanic or whoever's in there know that you're there to look at that because that is kind of a employees only, but I know people are interested in that, and you're welcome to look at it. It's a great machine. It's doing good. And I, well, I guess that's it for me. And, oh, she just reminded me. Dickman Hall. Um, other than putting in the appliances that we need and the alcohol in it, that bar is ready to open. Talking with uh, Russell Knoll, uh, so we built a false wall to just tunnel people into that bar area. But there's enough, excuse me, there's enough money left over in the budget from the donations and the uh, silent auction that we are considering taking that wall down, opening that dining area with the big fireplace. We have enough money for the indoor outdoor carpet squares, some paint, um, a few tables and chairs. We'll have to purchase those, but we're hoping to be able to make that like an overflow area. So people that don't want to be stuffed in that bar that's kind of small, you can get your drinks and come out and sit next to the fire. We'll have that going as long as it's working right. Um, but again, this is we we are still within our money that was do, uh, donated and, and raised. So we're going to move forward with this as soon as Russell gets back. And uh, again, if y'all are interested in seeing what it looks like when when Russell's gray sur suburban is out there, stop by <coughs> and just walk in there and look at it. You guys will really be impressed with the work that basically him and his wife have done. It's been them and Bill Peak and a few other volunteers but they're it's all volunteer and it looks amazing in there so y'all are welcome to look at it anything on your side <laughs> you want to go okay. in the meantime I'll, I'll just ask a question on the tiles that we're going to put the names of the donors here in there the tiles was, was uh, John's idea and it was it was actually a good idea but it's 
<laughs> As you think about it, it doesn't look, look like it's going to fit the scheme of the place. So there's a little cutout in the wall that's kind of recessed in, and he's got a person that, that makes their signs and their plaques and all that in San Angelo, I believe. Mm -hmm. Anyways, they're going to make a nice wooden plaque, and there's going to be brass tags with everybody, every donator's name. Um, there'll be a few pictures of the before and after and what it used to be back in the, in, in the day when it was up and running. Uh, so it's a, it's a nice little cutout on that wall that, okay. if you ask me, it was made perfectly for it. As long as, long as recognition is Oh yeah, there's going to be, everybody's going to be recognized. And again, I want to say a lot of this, 98% of this work is done with volunteers from Russell Knoll, Bill Peake, and uh, Patty. 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 Yeah. Don't forget maintenance who's involved. We, 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 we gave a, a little bit, but the majority of it was really the volunteers. It's amazing. You really need to look at it. Do you have anything on profit and loss on your I noticed that the restaurant made a small profit. It did. Oh, and that's another thing for money. Now we have our notes. Sorry. <laughs> we hired a new um, <coughs> restaurant manager. He is very skilled and, and, and has a lot of knowledge on restaurants. He ran, ran many, owned few, but the guy is amazing uh, in the kitchen. So we've kind of, I want to discuss with the board also, we kind of just let him go. Here it is. Here's your budget. Don't go over it. But shake it up, do what you gotta do, let's get this place to make money. He's more excited of opening the big restaurant, but for right now, he, he's gonna try and get that turned around. There will be menu changes, um, there'll be specials, different things on the menu, but I assure you, you guys will love this man's food. Um, so please give it a shot over there. And What's his, his name? His name is uh, Steve Botwell. He used to own the uh, restaurant as you're going out to Del Rio, the Longhorn or Smokehouse or whatever they want to call it, Lone Star. He owned that and ran it until it caught on fire and burned down. He ran a restaurant for 16 years in Three Rivers until the dry, the oil dried up and the water dried out. So he had to shut down there. But other than that, I mean, all of his restaurants were <coughs> successful except for their acts of God or fire. <laughs> what did you say his last name was? Botwell. B O T. B O U T. B O U T. Yeah. His mom lives here. Yes. Yes. She's in unit 15. One last thing. Um, we are trying to enforce, working with security, uh, we are trying to enforce more rules as far as, because I sat yesterday and I watched six people below that stop sign who didn't even tap their brake. We're not law enforcement. We can't chase them down, but we do have, we bought cameras for securities vehicle so what we can do is we can watch them drive through on the camera get their license send them the fine uh, sitting in my marked truck on that corner six people drove through looking at me two of them waved <laughs> never <laughs> hit the brakes the speeds, the speeds on on uh port Park road and skills road are ridiculous mm -hmm. you know i don't see many kids jumping out but it's just too fast so security is working with Stopping them and, and, and notifying them that listen, we have laws, the rules here, you need to follow them. Uh, if they don't follow them, then again, we start doing fines. So, those of us that. We can't, there's a legal, legally we can't do radar, we can't pull them over. I, I, I'll be honest, I'll tell you right now, I stopped two people. I didn't notify myself as a police officer or anything, I just said, listen, that's a stop sign, we need to stop it. And it's also, it's most of the time that everyone's headed to work are going back from lunch. So those are the hours that we're having security sit there, and I'm hoping with their presence they'll stop. But again, like I said, in my marked truck, six of them blew by me. So but we are... Can, excuse me, man. but you can uh, mail them a fine? Yes. Yes, because in our rules and regulations, it's that you're going to follow the rules, which is the speed, the stopping. Every other rule that we have in here, you need to follow. And I was questioned by one of the people that I stopped. Well, is that enforced? Yes, ma'am, it is. Read your rules. So uh, you might give them a warning first. <coughs> warning just, like, just like you do it. Well. Everything is a warning first. After that, there will be uh, fine set. And one <coughs> patrol officer. Um, so he, again, he can't be everywhere at once. But if we see things, then y'all <coughs> witness somebody that's driving way too fast, or reckless, or just completely blowing signs. If you know the vehicle, if you know the person, let somebody know up, up front or at security. Hey. 
Mr. Smith blew the sign. Mr. Smith's going 70 miles an hour. Then we can visit with them. So again, we're asking for help from the members to, to do this. At least give the warning. Correct. Perhaps it um, should come from administration, contact our local uh, UPS and FedEx drivers because they We've, um, yeah, I spoke with UPS already, okay. not FedEx though. Okay. You need to be in a bigger hurry or never mind. I did. I have some information, but I probably need a microphone. Oh, yeah. oh yes. I'm so sorry. <coughs> we become untangled here. Okay. I'll hold it for that. Apologies for my voice. I've been sick all week long, and um, my voice is coming <coughs> on throughout the week. Um, the only things I wanted to add it, add were that we have job postings in the in the Cuny County Post right now. We're looking for RV park attend uh, yeah attendant and also a pro shop manager still. Um, so please apply, uh, submit resumes, applications to the front, front office. Um, the director of operations, executive director posting is still live. We have received eight resumes so far. And on ZipRecruiter, the posting is gonna close on January 1. And the only other thing I have is that our motel books are being update, updated and put back in the motel rooms before Christmas so that we can hopefully get some business drummed up for the local businesses that are advertising in it. And that is all I have. I'll have a question. How's our website? Is our website up and running now, the new one? Yes, the, the new current website is up and running. And if you find any mistakes or things that may have been overlooked by us on the staff, um, please bring it to my attention so that we can get that corrected. Because I know there have been a few that I have to go. We have a new new person doing it, so yes, we'd like to know if there are mistakes. Yes. I've, I've received several compliments on how the site is looking right now, so but there have been some mistakes that have been pointed out. Did the CCNRs get put on there? The last time I looked, the CCNRs were not on there. No, not all. No, none of them. Well, I was going to send right somebody now. to it to read them, and they weren't there, so okay. I didn't know. We'll make sure those get put on there then. Are we doing it in house, or are we hiring? It is somebody out. The guy lives in Lubbock, in Lubbock. He's a professional. Yeah, he is a professional. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. It probably doesn't matter where he lives, but yeah. he can do what he wants to with that. Yeah. And he's and he's very good at what he does. He was able to give us some easy ways to get on YouTube and oh, download that. That is the one difference on our on our new website is when you go to the main page, up on the top right corner there is a red arrow or a red box with a white arrow in it. That is the YouTube button. So all you have to do now is click that and you'll go to our YouTube page that has all of our videos for the meetings uploaded onto it. So you don't have to go looking and hunting and pecking through the entire site to find where the videos are now. But you do have to know what that little thing means up there. Exactly, that's why. How do we know that? She just told you. Well, most people know that, the, that, little, that little symbol means YouTube, so. If you know that our oh, oh. videos are uploaded to you. Hey, I don't know anything about Facebook, and no, I don't know anything about <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Santa Claus has been good to me this week. Can I have three more minutes? You bet. Okay, one last thing that I did mention. Monique and I were going through golf um, paperwork, and we were finding, um, we were finding some things that are pretty questionable. Um, so there's people that pay yearly and, and then people that play just as they play as they play, and then we also have guests that come in. Going through three months of sign-in sheets, which is that thick, um, there we're catching some that are just signing their name and signing in that whatever number they are that they pay for the year. And I'm counting quite a bit of people that are not not paying. Um, people that are signing in as members when they're not. People sign in as for the DOD, which is Department of Defense, uh, and military discount that I personally know are not military. So <laughs> I've spoke with Craig, and um, he spoke with his team that they are going to be checking everybody's name. Now I know 
Sam wants to come in. I know Sam's up to date. But he may ask you, hey, Sam, are you playing 9 or are you playing 18? Because, well, he usually plays 9, but maybe this time he wants to play 18. So they'll ask you questions. Just be patient with them. Say, yes, we're doing this. Yes, you know we're not doing that. Just be patient with them. But the thing is, is there's quite a bit of money that I'm finding that we're losing on that. And that's not, that's not right. Nope. If you're a member here and you want to play golf, don't lie and say you're paying when you're not. Just pay the money. It's a, it's a little more, more than that. Those who are paying the money are taking the hit for those who aren't. Correct. Uh, it, it causes us to need to raise the, the rates yes. and everything else. So you need to look out for that yourselves. So if, if you're a member here and you're, it's just common decency, if you want to play on the course and you want it to look good, pay your, pay your money. It's, so anyways, that's y'all that are golfers here, if they start asking you if you're you know, any question, just be patient with them. They're not calling, thinking you're doing anything wrong. I'm just instructing them to start asking more questions and to make sure, verify what they're doing, who they are, and look them up in the system. If they're delinquent, sorry, you need to, you need to get right. These are, these are questions that are asked at every golf course that takes the public in. They ask you if you are playing nine or 18. They ask for your membership card if you're a member of the course. Um, so we aren't doing anything that any other golf course doesn't do. So we're not picking on anybody. Okay. Thank you. How are we done? <coughs> Architectural committee? <coughs> Sorry. Are we discussing profit and loss yet? Are we skipping? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'll... I forgot that, that we wanted to discuss Well, I, I've been here almost three years sitting up there, and every year everything's in the red. And this is the first time I've seen a cross in the black, if I'm reading this right. I mean, it says total income, 180000 uh, total expense, 151000 I made mean, almost $30,000. I saw that too. <laughs> and you know, it makes my head swim. And over on the restaurant side, uh, gross profit thirteen thousand, uh, expense eleven thousand, I mean close to two thousand dollars profit. So black and black, I, I don't think we'd all be cheering. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I apologize. He asked me that about three times, and about three times I missed. So on the Las Morris Corporation, which is the restaurant operations, we are also in the black for, what, the third month in a row? Of uh, $1,708.43. Mm -hmm. And so, I think that would be Philip's enterprise then, right? Or are the two of you doing it together? Of course you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I wanted also to note in the profit and loss because there's two ways you can report this with, with and without depreciation and bad debt expense. And that has been prorated out in this and that is included and we still make the profit. Well, yeah. But it wasn't prorated with now, it's been prorated for months, so still show up. Okay, anybody Stop. else have a question? Anybody else have a question? As long as we're there. And I don't want to go past you again. <laughs> yeah, in conjunction with that, uh, hunting is made so far this year has made forty eight thousand seven hundred seventy five dollars. Yeah. yeah, it's already over and we are not done with the, which is reducing the load on the on the grounds which we really need to do. Of course well, this year. If they keep going like this, we'll pay income tax. <laughs> oh, we got a ways to go. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Do we do we still have open dates for our money? Yes. <laughs> and it's helped this year that we've collected prepaid uh, for hunting so we don't have to try and chase them out the gate to pay except if they get um, trophy animals. Mm -hmm. So that's that's helping too. And, and Matt is not holding back on fines for illegal shoots or... Oh, I didn't know it was that. Oh, I couldn't see the huge rack on it. 
Matt's not holding back. You, you mess up, you're, you're getting behind him. He's making sure y'all pay. And they are warning. He's warning them ahead of time. They, I, have I, a, they have a meeting before they go out. He spits out all the rules, exactly where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to do this. And if they choose not to follow, you either out of here or you're paying the fine. He's not, he's not giving breaks. I don't know if that's enough fine for a baby dude, though. <laughs> I know. Still tastes good. <laughs> oh, sometimes you just can't unsee something again. <laughs> All right, architectural committee. And again, I keep forgetting to have you identify yourselves. Yes, I know you, but we have people watching on the. So please identify yourself. And, and she can go. I'm not worried about you, fellas. It's going to be everybody else. Good morning, uh, and welcome to the board meeting, and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Uh, the, ar the architect, my name is Phil Skibler, and, I, and I, am in chair, I am chairperson of the architect committee. The other members of the architect committee are Chris Abbott, who is our building inspector, Gabby Talamantes, who is our secretary, Chuck, Tar Chuck Taravala, Bob Martinez, Glenn White, and Bill Herman, who is always at our meetings to help us along. Um, but he's not a member. He is not a, no, he's to help us along. Dave Crow. He's not a member. Or liaison. Dave Crow. Pardon? You didn't mention Dave Crow. Oh, I apologize. Dave Crow also is on our, on our committee. Uh, we meet every Tuesday at 9 o'clock. If you've got nothing to do or if you'd like to come see what the architect committee is reviewing, we're here in this board committee, board room at 9 o'clock every Tuesday unless we have, do not have a uh, permit to review. The permits for this last uh, month that were, were reviewed were a fence replacement in Unit 7, roof replacement in Unit 3, an extension of a metal roof in Unit 38, and the replacement of siding and new paint in Unit 31. And again, uh, we did have a question as to the CCNRs being on the website, and I believe that's been answered. Thank you very much. <coughs> golf committee. Sorry, golf committee. Debbie Isaacs, and I'm just the fill-in person. They're gone again. Uh, we had a total of 533 prepaid members play golf in the month of <coughs> November. We had 106 people play that pay as they play that are members. A total of 41, 49 guests, three students, four military, one Groupon, and 76 tournament players. For a total of 636 members, 57 guests, and 76 tournament players. For a total of 769 players on the course in the month of November. I think that was four less than we had in October. Um, we actually got a Groupon this time. Yes, you did have one Groupon. All right. And I think we've had two Groupons for the month of December so far. Uh, we did have our meeting on the second uh, Wednesday of the month. We discussed um, uh, sprinkler heads. We bought, we bought some sprinkler heads through the fundraiser money that we have raised with our two major tournaments. We are buying 28 more heads. The company has changed hands and they're going up about $100 a piece. So Domingo found 28 heads at the old cost, so we told him to get all 28 heads so we would have them. We need, I think we need 20 of them right now to be replaced on the course. So we're spending that money. Um, we also are buying 10 more ball washers to put ball washers on the whole course, and that gives us one spare, so if one breaks, he can take it down and re repair it and have a spare all the time now. Um, the game mower is still down. He likes 
two more sections on repairing the gang mower. I know I get asked that on a continual basis about the gang mower. I know Phillip's very aware of it. Philip did come to our meeting. Uh, some tree trimming did get done. He's still behind on that because we have minnow problems again. So they've been working on the minnow problems. So that's one of the reasons some of this stuff isn't getting done. <coughs> the water cutoff covers are in and he's supposed to be replacing those, the ones that don't have covers on them. There's an issue of somebody getting out of a golf cart, stepping in those, twisting an ankle. So we have been pushing him to get those covers and get them on, the, on those sprinkler head. The garbage can on number five was totally rotted out. That garbage can has been replaced. Uh, sorry, I'm just going through this right quick. That's pretty much what we talked about. After January, we're going to start scheduling some work days to kind of trim up some of the bushes out there that they've, they've got the, the mesquites that look like bushes. We need to get those trimmed up so there's more like trees and they start growing up. <coughs> uh, we need to pick up trash and start getting ready for the Lost Moors Tournament, which is scheduled for April this year. Uh, we want to do, we'd like to do at least one work day with volunteers a month. We had one guest member at our Dyke Stewart came to our golf committee meeting and just listened. Anybody's welcome to come to those meetings. They are at 1 o'clock the second Wednesday of every month. We would just like to know if you're coming so we are prepared for you to be there. We, have a, we, had, a, uh, we had the Christmas tournament which only had nine teams in it and we're trying something new. We're asking you to pre-register for the tournament we put on. There's so much paperwork and so much calculation, getting the teams together and trying to get out on a certain time. And everybody wants to show up 20 minutes before the tournament and expect us to get out on time. You can't do it. So we're asking you to sign up the Friday before. Just let us know you're going to be there for sure. Then after 11.20, if it's 12 o'clock start time, nobody's going to be able to enter no matter what. It's just too much confusion, too many mistakes can be made. And we're just asking anybody that would like to play to try and help us out here. I'm a little long today, but I've done some calculations of what the golf committee has done this year. And by by the volunteers, and that is Don Allen. Wait, Luke, I'm sorry to bother you, but could you step up here because it's hard for me to <coughs> hear you from the side. And I hope that's okay. And plus, you know, in crown like that should be on record too for people that come to the meeting and I think it's crucial to what happened. So I hope that's okay and I don't need to be an idiot. The, the, the golf committee is Don Allen, myself, Deborah Jo Tischler, uh, Bruce Troutline, Sandy is our board liaison, Domingo comes, who is the golf course maintenance person, Philip comes, and Trent Brown uh, uh, comes sometime as our golf pro. But anyhow, just by the extra green, free, green fees we brought in so far this year was a, about $5,000 extra money into the golf course, strictly by volunteers doing this. That's not counting the extra money to the restaurant. That's not counting the extra money for, uh, green, uh, for trail fees or for the cart rent. So th these volunteers put many, many hours in, and they're very thankful, unthankful job. So when you see your golf committee members, they do need to be uh, commended for it. We do have a tournament on New Year's Day. It's the Hangover Tournament. <laughs> uh, it's a nine hole one game, nine hole the other, and then your scores added together for your. It's a thirty dollar entry fee. And you can buy mulligans. So come on out and join us for that. That will be at a 12 o'clock tea time. That's in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> 12 o'clock's noon. Okay. That's, that's all I've got. Midnight. That be good. I'm in there. I know it's going to be awake at midnight. Midnight is going to be No, but we are going to have a night tournament. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We are with another little fundraiser account that we have. Uh, we are going to buy night ball equipment. That equipment is going to be about $565. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are in the process. I 
got to okay the committee to okay the cost because I've just done that, found out all the new costs that it was going to cost us. So we're fixing to buy that. We also paid a hundred and are fixing to pay a hundred and ten dollars for the golf course to USGA to be a recognized course. That's coming out of the fundraiser account also. Uh, we also did pay uh, $1,500 worth of scholarships this year. What else have we done? <laughs> so anyhow, everything we raised goes back into the course. And then we have taken over, we have <coughs> taken over the fall tournament, what used to be the Happy Cervantes tournament. So we've got a fall tournament and a spring tournament now that is put on by the golf committee. Thank you. I will ask you to remember who the president is if you're told it's, to do something. <laughs> well, that's Deborah Joe Tischler. Oh, that's not what I. Okay. <laughs> that's not what I said. <laughs> no, I thought you did a good job, and I appreciate all the extra work you put into it. <coughs> do we have a report from the preservation committee? My name is Carlin Young, and I'm chairperson of the Preservation Committee. At our last meeting, uh, we approved uh, work, more work to be done on the Seminole Hall. When Mark did the uh, work that we originally sent out a contract for, let a contract for, he found seven more posts that need to be replaced. And so we approved that because, you know, we put in $16,000, another $1,800 for post and, and a new sign that goes up. Um, we'll finish the job. Uh, we did go over, uh, Phil Colbert and I went over and expected to work on uh, uh, the service club <coughs> that was done by a contractor. Uh, we failed every, we failed at 100%. Uh, I'm getting estimates done on how much it's going to cost to get a new contract let. Uh, the front porch will be a service club that got wind damage. Uh, that'll be a separate contract. Uh, in all honesty, uh, that should be covered by the Ford uh, for insurance. I don't think it was ever turned in. The uh, adult center, we were going getting ready to go out for bids on that, but the roof on the adult center is really damaged from the windstorm that we had. So I don't know, it's my, uh, like John Hodge said, you make sure the roof doesn't leak before you do any preservation work. So we'll, we'll let you know at the next meeting what's gonna happen with that. Uh, other than that, that's all I gotta report. Thank you, darling. All right. Did we bring in a someone after the windstorm to look at the building? Are we aware of that? Sure. There are two ways that that can be handled. One, we can report a claim to our wind and hail damage carrier, and they will send an adjuster out to do an estimate to determine whether or not. It is above or below our deductible, which is $10,000 per occurrence for wind and hail. So anything under $10,000, we're on the hook for anyway. Anything over 10, they only pay what is in excess of the 10,000. But we have filed a claim in that instance. The second way to do it is to get a contractor out here to look at the rebuilding. He would need photos of the original one because that's a I think that's a, 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 a historical sign building, and determine whether it, it's uh, above or below our deductible. If it comes in at eight grand, there's no use turning it into the carrier. We <coughs> pay it. Uh, if it's over ten, then we can determine that we need it to turn into the carrier to have them pick up the difference. Again, the first ten grand is ours, no matter what. Is that on we don't. We don't. Excuse me. Just total. That's the per occurrence. Mm -hmm. Per occurrence. Per occurrence. Could I interrupt <coughs> also to, uh, after the windstorm, we didn't have some, someone from our carrier come in and look over yeah. things? Yeah. 
That's who I was talking to. After this, after the storm, I had gotten with Mr. Hodge, and he instructed us to fix it in house, um, and not to. Was it, were we able to fix it? Or? <coughs> we had. Well, if, if y'all remember the tree that came through the restaurant roof, um, in house that was done. My guys redid the roof, uh, reframed the inside that was broken, put new roofing on it. We have a whole pallet of roofing material in our bunker for storage and that matches everything on this floor. So that's what we use. We use in house material, nothing came out of our pockets because we had extra lumber here. When it came to the service club, being that that contractor had kind of done us wrong, one of John and I had spoke with him, he said, okay, I will throw in that that awning that blew off because I'm late on what I, you know, I'm delinquent on what I'm supposed to be doing. That'll, I'll throw that in if y'all buy the, the material. Uh, we have most of the material for it already, but the contractor never showed up and said it was gone. So that's the only reason why it's not done. We haven't dropped the ball on it, but we were promised by this contractor it was going to be done. Um, Garland and I got together and spoke with some stuff over there, and, and, and that will be a separate uh, contract. Okay, so I, I want to move this along, but every time I come up with a thing like that, I have to ask. And I wish you'd let me ask before the audience asks. Otherwise, we're having a meeting with the audience. Um, community council. Good morning. I'm Allison Watkinson, member at large on community council and representing community council this morning for the report. We just met last week. We had a very brief meeting. Um, the, we have elections in January. And we the positions being elected on our vice president, secretary, and treasurer. So if anyone would like to volunteer, we would love to have you step forward um, to take part in those elections in January. <coughs> Fort Clark Days is well underway with the wonderful and very active participation of the Fort and Fort employees. Some Fort employees are making our um, chairs of some very important committees, and we really appreciate that. Um, we also um, we closed our meeting and then we had a very informative briefing by Bill Hahn on the progress on the National Historic Landmark District. What's the date of the Fort Park Days? Fort Park Days is the first Friday and Saturday in March. I believe it's the 5th and 6th. Just a moment, please. 4th and 5th. 4th and 5th, thank you. So it'll be the 4th and 5th. It is always the first Friday and Saturday in March. We say first Friday and first Saturday because sometimes March begins on March 1st, and in that case it is not that weekend. It has to be the first Friday and Saturday in March, always. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Okay. <coughs> Recycling? Do we have anybody? <coughs> You're stuck well, with it. I, I, I know she is. Okay. Um, you want to use it? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, hi. Um, I'm actually going by my married name now, so it'll be Beth Brookhauser. Um, I'm new with the recycling committee, I guess, and uh, I'm going to be uh, coordinating the volunteers. Um, I'm really excited about the opportunity to get Fort Clark going on, on some different Beth, avenues. you're going to need to use the... Get a little closer. Get a little closer. Yeah. Okay. This is my first meeting. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> so... Um, We're not letting you off the hook. I don't care. We're having a hard Well, thank you. And I'm really excited about doing the recycling, um, being involved in that. I've, I've, been, I've been here on the fort for about four months now. And I have just absolutely fallen in love with this place. I mean, you guys have an unbelievable home. And I'm going to work really, really hard to keep it that way. And thank you. <laughs> have you sent out any? No, no gay looks have gone out. No, I. We can't I... even get a truck until January. And we're going, to be, we're going to be doing the bailing, um, working with, with Philip yeah. to do the bailing, so... It was very full when I worked <laughs> the first of the month, so I yeah. can't imagine it's gotten any less full. Um, yeah, yeah we, we took out a, our... The maintenance came and took out a lot of the mixed paper to try to get bailed together. 
so we can start figuring out how to, how to empty it out without calling a truck every time. Great. Go and fill up all your place over there. Yeah. Or what we're trying to do is we're hoping to only send out direct loads. That'll make us more money. Yeah, it will. Okay, uh, we have an RV report that doesn't really announce much except that the Saturday breakfasts are going, so. Uh, and she was welcoming back the regular people who come in each fall. But like I say, about the only announcement she had was the uh, breakfast be starting already. And washer. Seven to nine, four dollars for all you can eat. What was the washer? Washers have washers started on Monday at 1 p.m. I thought they put the, that in an odd place. Well. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Recreation committee. Do we have somebody? Kind of limping along. At first they were concerned because they didn't have any money. Now they have money, so I'm not sure what's going on. Jim Tischler, who's actually the chairman of the committee, is in Wisconsin for the holidays, so I don't Well, there must be at least one other person who wants to work with Jim Tischler. I He's looking for volunteers for the <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Like I said, there must be at least one other person that will work with him. He's not here, so he's not going to respond. All right. Airport. I know we have people here from there. Entertainment time. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Sam Lark, and I am the unofficial Red Baron of Fort Clark. I'm the second in command of the <coughs> Clark Luftwaffe, and I'm here to uh, represent the Aviation Committee. Uh, Ray Goodson, chairman, is off somewhere for the holidays right now. First, I'd like to say thank you, Phil, and Phil, and the uh, crew that shredded the airport, the rest of the airport, did a great job. Did someone come out and bail some of that hay in the, in the past? No, There's no. a lot of a lot of hay on the ground out there. Some cowboy yeah. needs to feed his horse. If somebody wanted to, they need to come out there and yeah, bail that stuff. If y'all know people that, that, and people used to do that to stop on the highway after they, they shredded yeah. and take that home to their animal. If you know people that want to come and do it, just notify us. We'll let you out there, obviously, supervise. And grab some of that stuff and, and take it. it it's Absolutely. great. Right, yeah. Just, and we're trying to keep the entire runways shredded at least so that if anyone should run past the, the part that we have prepared, then uh, they won't have any trouble running into high grass. We now have uh, 2,500 feet of runway 14 cleared. Someone when you shredded that down there, we were able to take our little mowers and mow it out. We have 3,000 feet of runway 18 uh, in perfect shape and, and 2,500 feet of runway 14 in perfect shape. So we're in really good shape. Uh, we're thinking about trying to have a fly-in for Fort Clark Decks. Weather permitting, uh, we, and we might be able to even have a pancake breakfast out there. We'd have to advertise it at different airports and everything, see if we can get some people to fly in. Of course, we'll have to be there on the ground with a fistful of those uh, forms they fill out to, to assume liability, those liability uh, forms. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they land, we'll have people out there to fill that farm out. And we will also have some golf carts to uh, volley them to the uh, to the area where the Fort Clark Days is going on. We're thinking about trying to do that on Saturday morning. It's all in the planning <coughs> stages. We have a terrible situation with our old hangar out there. All the sheet metal is all curled up. 
and I was out there during the recent windstorm, and I thought the old place was going to fly away. <laughs> oh, the sheets were going like this. So we need to get somebody with a box of screws and some uh, some screw guns and get up there and just screw down all of those dovetail sheets so that they won't blow off. We lost some of the trim on the front there in the in this past hail a windstorm. And um, so uh, that's something we're looking into. Maybe the airport committee could do some kind of a fundraiser or something to come up with the money so it wouldn't cost the port to do that. Is that on a wood frame? Or, uh, it's all metal. It's, metal. it's a metal frame, and the sheets are, <coughs> are anchored down with, with uh, straws. It's a long, skinny nail with a lead ball on the top. They drill through the tin and go through the tin, pull it down tight, and bend it around the purlin inside to hold the sheets down. Those are still holding, but what's not holding is the, the edge of the sheet that's uh, flapping in the wind. So if we screwed all those down, it would make it a solid, a solid roof so it wouldn't flap away. And we're going to start losing sheets of metal. Uh, Ray had mentioned trying to paint the front doors and the front uh, gable of the uh, old hangar with silver paint and then put the sign back up there that said Fort Clark Field Elevation, 1166 feet, whatever it was, putting that original sign back up on the front. We can't do the whole place, but we could just maybe paint the gable, the front gable, and the, and the old doors. Those doors are rusted shut. I mean, we're rusted open. You cannot shut them. They're, that would take a, a lot of money to do that. So, uh, we're, Part of this being a preservation? Well, we're, we're just doing it ourselves. We've done everything out there ourselves, and we try to raise the money and, and, and do it without costing the board anything. So, Can I ask a question, Sure. Question? It's a historic hangar. Why is it not under the purview of the historic preservation? It is a very historic hangar. It is the second oldest military hangar in America. So our preservation There's only one order. Does our preservation committee money wouldn't be available for that? Well, I don't, don't know if it would or not. I, I don't think it has the National Registry. Yeah, but you, I don't even think it has a state registry. Well, that's the first step. Well, that is the first step, but it takes quite a bit to get that accomplished with yeah. with the shape that it's in right now. Okay. All right. I think it would be difficult. So well, it's in terrible shape. Yeah. All of the uh, steel reinforcement under the roof is all rusted and corroded and scaly and really bad shape. The windows are all knocked out of it. The doors are rusted in their tracks. There's no way you'd ever be able to close them so but it's worth saving it's worth uh working yeah. on and yeah it's worth i agree out. and and we're going to continue to uh try to improve things out there if you can if you can get with me sam I, um during the week i got two guys on my team that work great with restoring things and, and mm -hmm. i mean they're good with their hands they know uh, well, we can have a meeting down there and you can show them the stuff that we're capable of doing we don't mind helping. Well, Especially during uh, the season where I'm doing a bunch of mowing. I've got, I've got like, people that can use. Well, that, uh, that roof, you know, is the scary I'm thing about that is somebody sliding off and injuring themselves. So I'm going to let the two of you talk. Sorry? I said I'm going to let the two of you talk okay. later. I don't know when I lost control of the meeting, but <laughs> it be early on. I'm sorry, I... It's not your fault. <laughs> like I said, it's been long gone. I've, I've, uh, I've I'm trying to you. move it along. It's already past 10 o'clock. And I thank you. Yes, we can, but, but please get together with, with Philip, and I know he can help you. We still have search and certification. We've only had one meeting with the search and certification committee. <coughs>
I have applications back here at the back on the table if you'd like to run to the Board of Directors. That is in March. I also have some down at the golf course. Uh, your search and certification committee is myself, uh, Carolyn O'Block, Steve Diller, Darlene Sandwich, and Judy Winchell. Or you can go to the front office and there's applications up there also. Uh, we've only got one person that has committed to running for the board. And I have three maybes, but they have not got back with me, and I'm planning on touching up with them sometime the first part of January. So is, there, is there anything the board can do to push the maybes? I, I've been trying to convince them that it's the holidays, and I couldn't get some of them here. Uh, there's one I think's already picked up the application, and I've given the other one of the others, and I need to touch base with the other one. So. Is it in the whatever you call it, the e-letter, the 4 o'clock website, is, is it on there? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, and I was going to say, could we maybe put something on the bulletin board? There actually is something that's over on the other side. Okay, on the marquee. Okay. Why don't we just say run for the board, don't say apply, yes. because it's not really an application. Now, I don't know if they've got them down at the RV park, but I have them at the golf course, and I brought those in here. So. It has to be a, a landowner. Can we move it to the big big marquee? Because it's really hard to see on that little marquee. And just say, run for the board. <laughs> OK. Our first order of business is probably the saddest thing I've ever done on this board. And that is to discuss the resignation of be sweet. Uh, do you want to talk about it yourself or will you cry? No. <laughs> oh, joy. <laughs> <laughs> no, for a long time before I came in here, I wanted to get Dickman Hall going, part of which is a liquor license. And uh, because I married Charlotte, who had a son named Chuck. He has the liquor store. The, the TABC won't let me be on the board once we apply for the liquor license. So I will be resigning. Um, I think I'll probably just make the effective date of 1231 to finish this year. And that gives two months for all the paperwork that needs to be done to get the liquor license. And hopefully that thing could be open by uh, Port Clark days, what I know. But that'll be out of my hands. But I will be resigning because of the TABC rule. Thank you. Which means that we need somebody on the board for two months that isn't running again. So, um, got any ideas? Um, but first, uh, I don't know how to, how do you thank somebody for being on the board? You've been such a good board member. So I'm going to thank you that way. And I just Nobody cheered when I was leaving. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Yeah, but you're not leaving. You'll still be here. Oh, yes, and he's still going to work on some things with us that do not involve, I mean, as a... An, Volunteer. As an unsworn member. Unsworn, unpaid. Yeah. Well, your pay is going to be the same as it always has been. <laughs> okay. Um, the board has a packet of concerning the voluntary restrictions. Did you have time to read that? Um, this came from Rihanna. Is Rihanna here? Yes, she is. And you got it at the last board meeting, in case you don't remember. If you uh, remember it, you had a, as a Google map. Go ahead, pull it up. It won't matter if you guys have it. Remember that? 
that why they choose on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. So are you prepared to vote on this today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marlon, can I interrupt you? Who is going to replace Mr. Sweet? We, we have no idea. Oh, let me, let me explain first of all that the automatic person would be Jody. Uh, however, Jody is not willing to serve because she feels like for two months she would not be able to give us the amount of time we need or could she do the, the work that she thinks she could accomplish. So she has said that she will not be available to serve. But I have nobody else. Do you have somebody in mind? Well, who was the next runner-up? We didn't have anybody else. No, it was really a lot of writings. We don't use writing, and that would be setting a precedent. But if you, but if you think one of those write-ins I gotta believe, I'm sorry. I believe I would have noticed. <laughs> the, uh, the people who were write-ins are certainly people that could be asked to, to serve, but I'm hoping those people will be running for the board. So they can still serve the two months and just two months. I think that serving two months on the board gives them an advantage. But we will be talking about it, and if any of you are interested in possibly being considered as a temporary board member, you probably could let any of us know that you are interested. Um, uh, we will get together and come up with some ideas, and, and the board at this point will appoint. And <coughs> write-ins are not addressed in uh, 209, probably because write-ins, because the membership was not given the opportunity to vote for those people. So um, they're not uh, they're not the automatic next person in line. But we will, if you are interested, please let us know if you um, if if you're curious about what we do and you seriously want to help us for two months. And it's a busy two months because of there's a, because of the elections, getting ready for the annual meeting, and so forth. So we're willing to uh, we're willing to accept your uh, volunteerism. And if you doubted that I lost control of me, that would be the end of it. Okay. Uh, number 12 was the discussion. I'm sorry. We, on how we have to vote on the voluntary restrictions. Well, we have to have a, we have to have a vote for, I mean, a motion first. For the membership, we can do that after we have. Uh, no one wants to. Well, the only motion that I could legitimately make would be to discuss this before any decision, before we put any any kind of a vote, simply because I have several questions. Please don't go on. If you have a if you have a motion, please make. All right. Well, then I will move that we discuss this before considering a vote. Okay. You have a second. Second. <clears throat> We have only a motion to discuss. Second. All right. Uh, Monique, do you want to describe this as a in general, or do you want? I would. I would give it to Brianna. Oh, I didn't realize she'd come in. Yes. Okay. Well. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> She's not in. Uh, okay. We're discussing. Yes. We're discussing. All right. First of all, we'd like you to describe. This was given out in exact session. That way, if there's any questions, Mr. Herman came and Marie no, Herman came. What, what I want you to do the is voluntary restrictions are. Here. What the voluntary restrictions are is. Um, microphone. Microphone. Name. Thank you. Name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Brianna Hay. Hey, what's your name? Hey. Okay. Voluntary restrictions. Um, I don't want to call it an exemption, but um, we have uh, where we can qualify for um, recreation for a tax break. So 
say like the airport, we're getting taxed 300000 since it's a recreation. On $300,000. $300,000. We would be taxed if you qualify for the voluntary restrictions for about 20000 And that is considerably different. Um, the definition is recreation, park, or scenic use shall mean the use of individual or group sporting activities for park or camping activities for development of historical, archaeological, or, um, or scenic sites or for the conservation and preservation of scenic areas. So pretty much for your birding, for your walking trails, for the gun range, the airport, the par 3, pretty much all the green areas. We had this in place. It was first done in two, 2008. Um, it's not very clear because one of the descriptions it has um, the motor pool is exempt. I don't know how many people go get to go to the motor pool, but what what this is proposed is basically go, it matches up to Kinney County's um, CAD numbers. For instance, the adult center. It's, this is not the buildings. This is just the land. They have 2.63 acres. The adult center doesn't sit on that, so it's all the green space around it, which would be your common scenic. And so it's just, I think it's a little bit easier to read. I mean, you guys have had it for about a month, so I don't know if you guys have, it's just that when it gets recorded, anybody can go to the uh, courthouse or pick up the document, and then they can go to the CAD office, and you'll know exactly what they're talking about. Right now, we have, um, uh, you know, 14 acre or 1.4 acres of the Calvary. Like I said, the motor pool's on there. It's just not real clear. And so um, the board is the majority of the owners of the common area. And, and it refers back to the original 2,700 acres. And it just breaks it out. But what, what it would ultimately, if the board approves it in the current state, it's, it is saying that 1,813 acres is reserved for this exemption. Later in the future, if we have future developments or once we start clearing up some of our colonial lots, um, this could be amended per board. board. But, um, and then if you were to, say, develop, sell, sell something, they would have to amend it and they would have to do a save and accept. But before they could do anything, this would have to be amended again. But does that make sense? Yes. yes, I have a question. And if we accept this, does it, does it save us money on the taxes? Maybe not this year, but next year, somewhere along the line. The, if we, that's why the last two times that the board has done this, it's always been in the, the December meeting when they voted on it okay. because they have to have it by January okay. for us to have the benefit of it the, yeah. for the next year. <coughs> so that's why it's, it's in, in the past, the last two times that you, the board has done this, it's always been the December meeting. Okay. And, and I make the motion that we. Oh, we I still have questions. And like I said, any of this, this is on a, this is on Excel spreadsheet. So if you guys want to remove it, um, I know that Bill had come in and he was kind of and there were some tracks in Unit Twenty One that he kind of wanted to look at, see where it was. Um, I guess it was it was over by the museum, the common area by the museum. Um, but maybe we'll save us some money on taxes. It should save us because right now, yes, it should. Because it's showing 1,813 acres where we would qualify for that. Say again, the total? 1,813. Thank you. Okay, so we took the we took the motor pool out, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, and the uh, landfills out. Correct. Okay, the 18-hole golf course is in. That, that because is, we are not making a profit on that course, right? As per their application, it says that if they're, if, they're, if, if it's not showing, and you can you can show profit if for like salaries, but for, but I gave that there's there's the last three years of the of the loss. I mean, it's getting better. I think the first year was at 172 loss, and then it went to 72 thousand dollar loss, and then the following was 62. But the point is, I mean, not to get rid of the golf course because it really what I will do with real estate it. Um, People move here because of it. Um, and so what you want to do is you want people to move here, build their, big, their nice, big, pretty houses, and that's how the appraisal district gets their money, not by taxing us crazy amounts for the golf course, because lots of people are want to live on the golf course. So if the golf course at some point in time started making a profit, then we would just remove it Correct. From, from this. Okay. And we can remove it now, and that's what we do. That's 115 acres, and all this, like I said, is 
is is I, well, I I agree that it's it's definitely a recreation. It's actually a scenic area, and it's almost a parkland, and people use it for walking, and uh, and recreation. So uh, my qu other question, just to clarify things on all of these uh, unified parcels, plaza parking, and so forth. What is that specifically? Okay, so there I also put a Google map. And, and I can't and that, see anything on that. Okay, map. well that's okay. Uh, and when you look at, I don't know if you guys, you all live here and have different units. Well, there's quite a few units that are called Colonius, which they will never be developed. And a lot of them are probably your favorite golf cart trails and, and everything. So when you go out there, um, I didn't put the parking of Unit 1, but the, but the ones were like Unit 2, which is kind of, you probably don't even know this even existed. I didn't either, and I might be pushing so that you don't know. There's a, there's a lot of land out there. But when you look from Google Earth, it's just, it's like I said, there's, there's no parking. It was, it was platted out, but we, we're, we can't classify the, the, all I took was the parcels and the, and the parks of that subdivision. So there's still a bunch of green area, but technically there's, like, there's a deeded lot. So until that, that, those plats get vacated, um, um, we can't claim all of Unit 4. We can only claim like the parcels. I put the parking for Unit 4 because if someone can show me where the parking is, when you look on Google Earth, then then we can maybe take it out. But if you want to take it out, we can. It's not very much. No, I was just wanting to know for sure that I was reading it right. Are these parcels colonial lots that the fort owns and that are not deeded to others? Wait, this is all Fort property. Okay, that's Nothing on here is 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 is, is that, anything else. That clear that clarifies it. Um, when I stopped by the other day, you weren't in your office, and so I thought I'd just ask you today. I think Myrna had a question on Camper's World that that might be a. Um, yeah, I, I've already told her. Camper's World, I think, it is a uh, a trademark of the bicycle. And, and, and it's y'all's property, so you probably can change it. This, I was just following this up with the appraisal district. This is just what the appraisal district has it labeled. So if you guys okay. don't like that, we could probably talk with the appraisal district and tell them we, we can discuss. We want our property called this, not Camper's if, if World. If it's legally that and that's okay, then maybe there's not an issue of it. But. It would be that would be an appraisal district. Like I said, this is just matching up. Like it has the CAD number. So when you go to their computer. It's just transparency is all I try to do. I mean, so if, if we change the name and we don't tell, I mean, we, it, it, they kind of need to right. know since they're the ones that are doing it. Is this the name that's being has been used in the yes. past? And this, this is this is this. All this came from the appraisal district's office. This this is uh, on the descriptions. Okay. I don't have a problem with it. You've been using it. I don't have a problem with it. Probably nobody notices that this little bitty place is using it. But when they do, and this is just land, so there, there's not, there's not any structures. This is right. just the, the land because we have, we're taxed on the building separate. Are we done? Uh, those are the only oh, questions. we we did, we did put the airport in. Yes. Yep. Any any other questions? There are a couple of um, typo errors that need to be corrected. Okay. On um, page two of your of the voluntary restrictions, yeah, uh, there are some instrument on, attempt and at least one on page one too. Yeah. But that's that's yeah. a before before we get record, before we record anything. I mean, <coughs> yes, it takes a village. <laughs> Do you, is the, do you anticipate any problems with the assessor's office on this change? On these changes? Uh, it's good, maybe. I mean, but when we had our meeting in May, they said we have to fix the voluntary um, restrictions, and um, so we're fixing them at their request. Right, and then right, and the, and per their thing, we, we would need to go to um, either uh, Bob Adams needs to come here, or we need to go to his office. Um, so that way they would witness your signature. So we can sit with him and if y'all want to have a discussion and like I said, it, right now what we're just trying to do is we're, we're just trying to, to see if you guys, because it, because it, by majority of the vote, um, would ha we have to do this, but nothing is final until like it's recorded. So right now you're just voting that we're going to change it before probably January 1st. And if that, if we need an extension, the application does say that the appraisal, um, the chief appraiser could grant that. 
so so like I said, what, just because we voted on this, like you said, there's typos and stuff. Um, I think we're, we're primarily voting on, on where we want these voluntary restrictions to be. The form that has the, the typos on it is the one that can easily be fixed. Uh, are you ready for a motion? Uh, let's deal with the, are we finished with the discussion? Just a minute. Are we finished with the discussion? Any more discussion? All in favor with closing discussion? Opposed? All right, now I'm ready for a motion. Uh, I'll make the motion that we accept uh, re uh, Rihanna's recommendations or however they come from to accept the voluntary restrictions uh, proposal. All right. Is there a second? I will second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? See, there's even room for opposing when it's... All right. Now are we ready to move on to uh, the chapter 209? Um, the alternative payment plan that we got from Renee is, it's been a kind of a strange way to get people to pay uh, payments and we can only do 18 months and then we have to start over again. As she pointed out, some of them were starting new payment plans three times in a year, which made it odd, if not difficult. Uh, any, any questions about what she's trying to accomplish here? It's, it, it made it available in the, the change in the law this time, so that, that collections can go out and work with these people rather than having them uh, start new payment plans and, and then we just lose the amount, the money in between. You look at me like you're not following, but that's okay. This is something we may do, but it's not a shall. No, we don't have to do it. Well, I, I just would like to ask uh, Monique, uh, since she is the one who's in charge of this, uh, are not, nothing that we're doing now is in opposition to the state law. Yeah. And then you make the recommendation as to what you would like us to do, retain what we use in our own changes, because we don't really have anything to do with this. Well, the recommendations were made by Renee Ford, who is our Renee Ford, person. Yes. And um, she, I mean, she put it out in, in her recommendations that she thinks that we should be able to do um, more than 18 months because it might be uh, more viable for people to be able to make the payments instead of the, the lesser amount of time because then the payments will be higher. And, the, and is she, is she is the one who's making the recommendation? Yes, she is making the recommendation from her experience. And this, this is from her department? Yes, ma'am. Then I'll make a motion that we accept it as we may unless there's any more discussion. When we go into agreement with someone... Can, can we have a second before we... Then we can discuss? <coughs> You want a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to agree with someone to catch up. We can extend it out past 18 months now, where it was mandatory. Yes. And, but they are, they're going to catch up in addition to the regular payment? Yes. Yes, sir. So their total is um, put together, and then the amount that they pay off for the what they owe us always includes what the current month is to keep them current with us. So they're not only paying the current month of assessment, but also with back pay of what they owe us in their debt. Okay. Now what happens, what happens if they fail to keep up? Do they automatically take it off the payment plan? Um, they are notified that they're that they've missed a payment and then they are removed and I think there is a certain amount of time that she allows them to be able to come back on. 
more or less we're agreeing that the change in the law is the way we want to change our own. Any further discussion? Ready to vote? All in favor? Opposed? It should be noted, though, that we do have to rewrite this and file it. The guidelines, yes, yes. The guidelines have to be rewritten and filed. I thought she put that in there as part of her recommendation. Sorry. Most of this is in the declaration or in the bylaws. <coughs> No, this, this is separate. They're guidelines that we had to adopt per the 209 when it came about. And so it's it's not anything that's noted in our declarations or our bylaws. No. It would be more like rules and regulations than bylaws. But we, it could be put in the bylaws, I guess. Um, the number 13 is simply a catch up for an announcement that needs to make be made in the regular meeting that we did vote by uh, email to approve the purchase of the window unit for the motel room that uh, Philip mentioned. So that's, uh, there's no vote, vote needed now. We, I'm just telling you that it happened. Okay, the discussion update on the Declaration of Protective Restrictions. Sandy, I think I'll let you take care of that. Okay, um, we are working on those. We uh, are adding some definitions to the Declaration uh, for certain types of things that uh, weren't uh, explained. And uh, we've had members um, suggest to us that uh, those that are not property owners may not vote in board elections. So before we can go further in the declarations, we have requested a legal opinion on this from our HOA attorney. Uh, we haven't heard the reply yet because she is, uh, I'm sure, doing some research so we know how to go. Now this would, uh, as we interpret it, affect those that do not actually own property, which would be the family recreation memberships and charter members. None of those own property. And these are long-term um, members here. We've asked about grandfathering and all these kinds of things. So we're kind of stuck right now as far as going further with the declarations until we get a um, legal recommendation from our attorney. But we wanted you to know that we are actively working on it and we are trying to be very, very careful and do it right the first time. So. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have 15 minutes for members. We just gained a few minutes because Garland left. <laughs> Kathy? Yes? Okay, good morning. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Kathleen Moore, and I'll try to talk a little bit slower because normally I really rattle on. This is my first meeting. Wally and I left her in April, and I had wanted to discuss Dickman Hall, but I think between Philip and B, a lot of my questions have been answered. But my first one off the wall is, this room looks gorgeous. When we left in April, it was dismal, it was dirty. We are, I am so impressed, so extend my thanks to anyone that helped do this. This is enlightening. On that note, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm glad to see that we're going to have the Officers Club opened up. I do not understand the conflict of interest, I guess, with Mr. Sweet and the Texas TABC. My question is, do we, are we going to have any problems getting a bartender? Okay, good. Wally and I have been patronizing that place since 1982 because we don't drink beer, we drink martinis. And I'm very glad to see it's going to open. I hope it gets open by March because it would have been neat if it was open now. 
because after you go kill a deer or two, we always went over there and celebrated. Um, uh, no, that'd be a bloody Caesar. <laughs> I'm rattling my minutes. Anyhow, you did answer my question on the grand opening, which hopefully will be Fort Clark days. And I would hope when we get that open, we take pictures, have a huge grand opening, and maybe send Mr. Hodge some pictures of it, because he was a great instigator in getting this thing reopened. I, I think that's another one. And then also, as I kind of move on a little bit, um, Matt and Sam have been, I'm a little bit off Dickman Hall, but, just, but Garland left. <clears throat> Matt and Sam have been doing a bang up job. My husband has been a recurring harvester since 1982. And he does it every year. Okay, so it's looking really good. The animals are getting down, but Matt is making sure we are collecting the money. And people are recurring here. A lot of them are coming from Houston and Dallas and Austin because this is the best deal going instead of getting a lease for 20 grand a year. And they are coming down to shoot Axis Bucks trophies. On that note, it's so good to be down here again. So it looks good, you guys. That's all I have. Thanks, Myrna. Thank you. Bless you. You're welcome. Jan? Well, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. It's nice to see you all sitting behind me. <laughs> I don't always see them. Um, three little things. <clears throat> I think we need a sign in Unit 27 saying that it's Unit 27. I have people stop me and say, where am I and how do I get out? <laughs> and I, I know Unit 27 is sort of all around back there, but maybe one or two signs somewhere in that area. Also, um, when John was here, we had Java with John. I think we need to have Java with the board. I, that was my suggestion, the first suggestion that I made when he left, that we continued in some fashion. That and never, not all the board members. One, just, one each time, one or two. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up because I... We tried yeah. to get it started, but just took off in all directions. Well, that's where you left it. Yeah, I Let's see if we can get it done. Maybe if you change it to breakfast with the board, people won't. That's what we thought. Mm -hmm. You could have a bring your taco. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy Warren was on the board for that martinis with Kathy. Yes, you did. Taco somewhere. And then another question I had on the habitual speeders. Uh, after they've been warned and you've done everything you can, can their employers be made aware? Aware of that. That's kind of a touchy situation because it's personal. So uh, we can't really involve their. What we're trying to come up with uh, spike strips. No. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot. Uh, I don't think we really, um, no. take our business that we're doing here. I, I think we involve their. Be sued on that one. Yeah. 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 Could we, could I think can, can't you as request. Sheriff's Department to send someone up here at those hours and let them sit just like you were? That's an old jurisdictional thing that we have to discuss with the Sheriff's Department. Well, they, they, know, they have a right to come up yes, here and they, do they that. Can there's there's and a they, paper on that that they signed with uh, Ford. Once before, they said our signs were not the right heights and whatever. Stuff. Yeah, they were saying that they had to be that go anywhere in King County. So. Yeah. I think I think a discussion with them as to a you know we find that there's a particular spot that we need watching. Perhaps they'll agree to stop people if not even if they don't want to cite them, at least stop them and talk to them. Bobby Gidry, which was the constable, used to come on here frequently. Um, I see uh, Sheriff Chisholm come on, but that's just from the gate to his house. But yeah. Gidry used to come on and. and I thought he resigned. 
Can we talk to them and see what yeah. we could work out with them? Yeah. I think the kids like them. They just bounce higher. Um, Allison, were you going to? Is it my turn? Yes. Sorry. That's okay. I'm Allison Watkins, and I do remember the sheriff telling us at the law enforcement panel that we had and security panel that we had at community council that he was a top law enforcement in the county, and they can come over here. And the the issue about the signs not being the right height and all of that is not an issue. I mean, that was one thing that was said at that. So I'm sure that if we call the sheriff and have him come on out. Um, next, I would like to commend um, Philip and Monique. Monique, I know that you're um, really um, overtaxed and underpaid, but I do believe that you guys are doing an awesome job um, in the interim here. So I do want to commend you for that. Thank you. And then lastly, um, a year ago at, one, at our um, Halloween Ghostly Tours, we had some people who came, um, I was able to fit them in, and they brought um, me this sweatshirt, and I packed it away a year ago, and then this year when I unpacked for the Ghostly Tours, I found it. So I want to present it to the board and maybe to administration. Um, I don't think it should go to the Historical Society because that's more about the actual fort. But I think that there must be a place either here or in the office that this shirt could be displayed because it is part of the fort's history. So, okay, so I'm going to put it up here. You guys figure out where it should go. Um, and I apologize for the your tardiness. <laughs> Thank you, Allison. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. How about in Dickman Hall? That might be, yeah. yeah. Dickman yeah. Hall, because it was part of the ranch. How about Dickman Hall? And we can put it in a freight. Yeah, it was a ranch. And everybody will want to buy one. We don't have it. And um, have, a, have a drink in a glass frame. Could be another fundraiser. <laughs> Allison, do you have the name and information of who gave it to you? Um, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. I have to go back and look at the records, but I do have it. Yes. Okay, yeah. I'll get that for you. All right. Mary Frances? Oh, well, most of my questions have been answered. Y'all have done a great job with the meeting, and I appreciate it. And I appreciate Mr. Sweet's service for us and I'm sorry that you're leaving us. That's that's one of my things. You'll still be here for us to ask questions of <laughs> Yeah, he's not getting away that easy. I don't want him to meet with us every week. Um, I have a question about the pr protective restrictions thing, the, the legal thing that y'all are working on. Do you have a date when it has to be finished and voted on and all that? No. Does it have to go through a general election of the whole next Yes. Year? yes. So you do have a day to get it finished. Yeah, it doesn't have to be done by this election. We can actually send it to the memberships to vote, membership to vote on at any time when we're finished. It, it, it doesn't yeah. have to be a, a certain date. Mm -hmm. But next next year, am I correct in saying we will have no director's election? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We are going to shoot to have it brought before the membership next March at the annual meeting voting. March, no, it won't be March, but it will be like you send them out like in February. Well, because I'm, aware, I'm, I'm sure that we all are aware how expensive it is to set mail out to all the members. And if it could go out in the election, well, they, it they has have, to be that's what we were thinking about saving money. If it, we got we to gotta send a notice for it. We got an election of directors or not. We must have an annual meeting by state law. So we cannot skip having an annual meeting. We have to send it out by mail because we have people that cannot get it by electronic means. Well, we, we also, uh, anything, any vote is a vote, mail by vote. Yes, right. And we don't have, uh, so we can't do it by email or anything like that. It's got to be mailed out. Okay. The other question I had is uh, the license that, that has to, Mr. Sweet said it would take two months to get all the paperwork for Los Morris. But I thought that we had a Los Morris license that we've kept active all these years. It's actually in suspense. Our, our liquor license for Dickman Hall or for that location is in suspense. And we still have to post a 60-day notice poster that we are getting it back up into um, activity as well as we have to post it in the newspaper and prove that we've done that. And so that's why we have to have his resignation now. Okay, well, that was, I didn't understand that. And the other thing that somebody said, we're not allowed legally for our security to have a radar gun to, to get 
cheating uh, records? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma we aren't allowed to do That's that? correct. Um, Why? Speaking, it's, it's law enforcement. Mm -hmm. They're the only the ones that can have a radar gun? That, well, uh, and to enforce it like that or to write tickets, yes, ma'am, it has to be law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Now, John Hodge had uh, suggested getting a one of those signs, that those big obnoxious signs that you see on the highway, your speed is this, your speed should be this. Um, and we were visiting with an ex-law enforcement here on the board. I uh, don't know what, exactly what happened with that. John is in here, but um, yeah, we, we can't sit there and like security right there, non-commissioned officers, we can't radar and ticket on that. We have to be law enforcement. Maybe we could radar them and send them a warrant? That's kind of what we're, that's kind of what we're doing with the cameras in the, in the security vehicle, um, especially sitting at a stop sign. And the camera's very good for what little we spent on it. And you can watch the vehicle drive through and get behind it and get its license plate. It's brought back up. We send the fine. If there's a question, here's your vehicle. Here are you in the video. That's kind of what we can do right now. Okay. Well, that was, I just wondered why we couldn't have our own radar. Visiting with the law enforcement. Monique and I are going to probably visit with the sheriff's department about having them come on here more often. Hopefully we can get uh, Mr. Burgess to help us out with that. Yes, Adam. Philip, just, a, just for clarification, the speed limit is 25 in the historical district area, and it's 30 everywhere else. Give or take, yes, you're up here. I mean, once you get past the intersection of Fort Clark and Scales Road, or scales. Yes, yes, from that point on, it's 30, right? Yes, sir. and down, uh, Place it down Scales Road, I believe it's also 30. As you come in the gate, it says 25 everywhere in this. 25 up to that. Well, I've got to get my golf cart hopped up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing but six. You're not going fast enough. I think there was at one time many speed limit signs in the units themselves. I think they were all posted, I think, 15 miles an hour in the individual units. Ew. Four o'clock road and uh, are, are scales we, road. You know. Not only does the sign up front say 25 unless otherwise posted, but our rules and regulations also states that. Yes, sir. I have a question. We can't control the speed and we can't write tickets, but we can control the access sticker. We provide those. Yes, and yes, if we do. somebody gets too far out of line here and just continues to offend, they can sticker can park outside on the highway walk in. <laughs> we're take, we're take very long. What we're, hope, what we're hoping is the same thing that happens with these dogs being loose and, and, and careless pet owners. Um, after a few fines and, and the word starts getting out, listen, these guys are sticking to it. We're hoping that it. I mean, we're all, most, the majority of us are all adults here and we should be following the rules. Um, I know I get on my wife daily about it, but that goes in one ear now. What, she's been running loose? <laughs> the, uh, there's a leash law. There's a leash law. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Shot collar. <laughs> Sorry. I wonder, um, one of the things if you could address, if maybe they could loan us a couple of times their um, speed check sign with them monitoring it, like putting it on Fort Clark Road someplace. And Who has one? That'll be a discussion with, with the Sheriff's Department. Sure. Okay. Somebody is for the day. Yeah. 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 Maybe we should put some fake deer. Do you think that the deer... <laughs> <laughs> no, they just run right there. 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 Right Trying, trying to Nine. enforce our own fines, which we are well within our rights to do, and that money comes straight to us. Mm -hmm. So far, I can, we have, it doesn't sound like much yet, but we have collected one fine on a loose dog, and we have filled out, I want to say, 10 registrations for the animal, so it's, it's not going to happen overnight, but we're, we're working towards it, and then hopefully with having security set up on these stop signs from now on, and around uh, work, going to work and lunchtime, Hopefully we can get the word out. Either people will slow down or we can start making some money off their negligence. Okay. Um, we're going to um, adjourn to the executive session. Kathy, would you...
stop by up here before you leave. I know you don't stay, so could you come up before you leave? Okay. Thank you. Okay. I don't know what time it is. 10.56. I have 26 minutes past 12. It's 12.26. I'm calling the meeting back to order. Uh, during executive session, we discussed employee issues and expanded on some of the things we heard during the meetings, nothing that would be helpful right now. We did discuss the fact that we would start the job with the board after the January meeting. Uh, Anything else we should be reporting on? Okay, then the next regular board meeting will be January 16th, 2016, at 9 a.m. Um, anything else? Yes, I caught it too. <laughs> Do we have a motion for adjournment? A motion to adjourn. Second. At time. 12.28. 12.28, we are adjourned. <laughs>